Hey guys, welcome to another Healthy Indoors Minute. It is summertime, it just rained, it is humid as anything out here. We're in Atlanta, Georgia. If you're not being uh, keeping up with our build, we've got the new build here, we've got the tiny house here. What everybody's thinking about, because it's summertime, is air conditioning. And that's what we're talking about as far as Healthy Indoors goes right now. So the thinking, and we're gonna have a video coming out soon on how heat load and cool load calculations work in a computer. This is how you size the air conditioning and the furnaces for a space, a living space. That is based on temperatures. It is partially based on moisture content because you want the air conditioner to dry out, you're assuming that it will, but really you're sizing an air conditioner for heat. You're sizing it for something like 95 degrees, let's just say. And um, that is a mistake in most places. In most places all over the country, but we'll use here as an example, it's not gonna be most moist when it is as hot as it's ever gonna be. That was the assumption for a long time, and that's what a lot of the tables out of you know, the ACA standards and even ASHRAE were about, until ASHRAE did a study, and Lou Harriman, and if you haven't heard this interview that I did with Lou on the Building Performance Podcast, I highly recommend that you do, it'll be linked in the description below. But he was part of a study that actually discovered that the highest moisture content, as far as humidity, absolute moisture goes, was in the mid 80s. So if you're sizing an air conditioner for the hot days, it's actually gonna have to work a lot harder to wring the moisture out of the air on the less hot days, and so it won't run as often and therefore won't do as good a job. And this is kind of this snowball effect now that happens, which is why, number one, this house you can see is parked in shade. There's a huge tree over the top of it. If I was depending on the air conditioner in this house, and this is a ductless mini split, which I'll get to in a second, but if I was depending on any kind of an air conditioner to heat this or to cool this house and to dry it, I would be forced to park this house in full sun so that the air conditioner would know that it was supposed to be working, supposed to be drying out the air, because the only thing that kicks the air conditioner on in most houses is gonna be the temperature, what's called the sensible temperature. That's the actual degrees, not the relative humidity. Of course, in this house, we have a full-time desiccant dehumidifier running. Desiccant because, number one, it's very quiet. It doesn't have a compressor in it, which I like for such a small space. Um, but in this house right here, we're going to have not one but two dehumidification systems. And in fact, I have a dehumidifier running in there right now. We're only about a week away from having this thing totally enclosed, but in the crawl space, which does not get sun ever, water gets down in there and then it needs to get dried out. So I have a dehumidifier that's been running in there for months just constantly sucking out the moisture that's in the air. We need to be doing this in all homes in general as they get tighter and tighter as they get newer. Because of course the energy codes are requiring homes to be more tight, more insulated, have smaller uh, HVAC systems. A smaller HVAC system is also going to do things like dry the air less because it's smaller and so. So anyway, all of this to say, we need to expand this conversation about moisture in homes because of course moisture is not just about mold and mildew, Mold and mildew are out there, and we we have an inkling that they make people sick, but it turns out that we don't actually know exactly how they make us sick. Probably what we're getting sick from in this sick building syndrome is all of the subsidiary um, side effects that happen when you humidify a space. All of the chemicals and all the particles and all the biome uh, comes off of the surfaces and into the air, and now that's what we're breathing. And so it's not just little bugs. It's also the chemicals and the, the particles and things like that. So I hope that you think about this with your own home. I hope that this helps you inform how you're going to be approaching homes uh, in the future that might have something like sick building syndrome or even just a higher humidity than you want. You walk into this house and it's 74 degrees and actually 40% relative humidity. It is really chilly in there. If the dehumidifier is full and needs to be emptied for a couple hours and it stops dehumidifying, 74 degrees suddenly feels monstrously uncomfortable. So take all that, use informed decisions, make sure that you're thinking about dehumidification in addition to air conditioning because they go hand in hand. They should not probably be run by the same machine as we go down the line. Remember to comment, like, subscribe, visit Healthy Indoors Magazine and subscribe to that too. Tune in next time.